What's up, PB Cashuville? It's your boy, PB. And today, we're going to give you an offer that you can't refuse. Because you know what we're going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about Matthew. The Godfather. Exactly. That's what we're going to talk about today. The Godfather. Hit it. What's up, PB and Cashville? It's your boy, Cash. You're right beside me. It's your boy. It's your boy, PB. And PB wants me to go straight into the conversation of the Godfather. Exactly. I was going to ask him how his week was, but he's like, nah, we're going to just talk to about the Godfather. No, 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 no. It would be a great gross disrespect if we did not discuss how our week went. So, please, Matthias, ask me how my week went. All right, PB, how was your week? You see, my boy, my boy, Matthias, my week has been one of great challenges and a lot of different things that uh, make me feel very stress, stressful. You know what I mean? But it's stressful. There's so much stuff that's just going on. It's so crazy. And then all of a sudden your brain is going in so many different directions. But you know what's great about it? What's great right about it? The great thing about it is it's over. It's over. There's no, there's nothing else to do. The week is here. You're here. I'm here. We're doing this podcast. It's great. I love it. I that's love good, it. That's good. And the way I'm doing the Marlon Brando voice, I don't know. Because you know why? Because we're doing the Godfather. Doing the Godfather. So, what's up, PB Cashville? Hope you like that little bit. But here's the thing. There's a bunch of people in this world that apparently have never seen The Godfather. I can't do the voice, by the way, so I'll ask. And so we had to make, we had to see, and we learned that one of our colleagues, one of our dear esteemed colleagues, who's been on this show, has never seen The Godfather. And so we thought that we would correct that by coming to my house to watch The Godfather. And... Well, I actually didn't. You, you, you're the one that did it. You just invited me out of nowhere because I wanted to take him out to eat. And he goes, "Come watch The Godfather with us." And we also watch what is it called? Analyst this. Analyst. <laughs> Yo, it's been a minute since I made a mistake. You know what I'm trying to say, okay? How you say? It? Analyze this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a it's been a minute, Cash uh, PB Cashville. It's Anal- been a minute. Analyst, this <laughs> that's like a story. That's like you know a story about like ESPN guys. Oh look, it's it's a story about Stuart Scott. It's analyst, this. Oh my goodness, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. So going back to the story, uh, we had a name for Jose. We did have a name for Jose. I but, can't remember. But I can't remember what it is. But We had a name for everybody. We have a name remember. for everybody. We even... I think there's even... Like the Avengers one that we did, there's even like a caricature of him in, in a... Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, uh, I just don't remember. The only one I can remember is my cousin, Richie Rich. Richie Rich. That's right. the only one I can remember. But everybody else, I don't remember. We need, I'm to sorry. Get, we need to get Richie Rich back on this. We got to get more guesses back in yeah, here, though. Richie Rich had like that smooth, hey, what up, ladies, kind of voice. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he does. He does. I oh, see, see, how you, see, said you, that. you know, so crazy. We always had that aim of just like, you know what? We're going to go tired. Just going to go straight to it. But I guess it's just our thing where we just. We just go off the. I guess you get uh, we just, rabbit hole. We have to go down trail. the rabbit trails to just to kind of get things through. So, again, going back, Jose's never seen um, The Godfather. And he wanted to watch Analyze This, which, just so you know, it's, there's a lot of bad language. In both movies, let's be honest. In both movies. But The Godfather, and there's a lot of violence. Violence. So, kitties, don't watch this. And just because we are talking about it doesn't necessarily mean that you should go watch it. Oh, by the way, spoiler alert. Oh, spoil... Well, spoilers, yes. We'll be talking spoilers. A lot of different spoilers about this I like movie. About, I feel like you're backhand me by doing that. 
Like, I really feel. You like, want a fresh one? You want a fresh one? <laughs> I feel like you have a back hair. Be like, I'm just gonna be talking. Oh! I know. Like, Imagine that. We're talking, you back and back hair. <laughs> just like, I'd be like, what's up with the disrespect over here? The disrespect. <laughs> I, was, I don't know how I learned to, that's, it seems to be that the Marlon Brando Godfather impression is a lot of people's favorite uh, impressions I love Eddie Murphy though well, well actually have you ever seen Beverly Hills Cop? yes I have I, I have not seen it's been a minute since I've seen Beverly it, Hills Cop yeah I mean that that's there should be like a greatest Eddie Murphy movie uh, thing because here's something that and, and we're just gonna pitch this out there because this is just something that I have observed observed very very well it seems now it seems that when we're talking about movies me and Matt are like on the same wavelength like we can really banter about it because if we talk sports I'll be like yeah sports are good I like basketball too. And then you're like, yeah, hockey's great, hockey's great. And Matt's like, yeah, hockey's good. They get in the fights. It's good. But then we talk movies, it's like, yo, this, da, da, da. And then this happens, and then, then that happens, and then this, this happens. So we might just be more of a movie kind of podcast. Because I think it's, I, I don't know. But we've got to throw it out there to you, to the folks that never post on our comments direction, because I don't know why. But we'll still put this stuff out there. Too much work for them. Too much work it's for too them. Too much work. Uh, no, I just got to type stuff, and I got to think things, and then oh my gosh, people got to read this. So we do thank all 20 of our subscribers. Why do you mean like that? There's 22. <laughs> It's 22. 22. Maybe it's Woo! 22. I can look it up right now. Maybe it's 22. I'll check right now how many subscribers we have. <laughs> so while, you keep talking. Well, Matt talked about the subscribers. We wanted to talk to show Jose how cool the movie The Godfather was because it is a icon. 22. 22. It is an icon of a film. In fact, on most people's lists, and I believe that this is true, and I think it's probably mine, I probably think that it's a better movie than than most movies. Probably the greatest... A lot of people believe that it's the greatest American movie ever. So, But we'll discuss that today on the PB and Cashew show and just to see if this is true or not. We're only not going to talk about it too much, but we, you know how these things go. We say, ah, it's not going to take that long. And, then and then all of a sudden, five, five hours later, and then there's... <laughs> we have the thing completed, so, so yes, so we, we came, we all came to my house. We had Doritos, a lot of yeah. That, well, for some reason, Doritos. Matt and I finished almost half a bag of family size Doritos. I'm telling you, man, I can eat those. I was, I, I couldn't believe it either. It's like, wait, you messed, you made a mistake. Uh, it how it went like this. Me and Jose had to go to Dunkin' real quick. Yes, got a strawberry dragon fruit, and they Jose forgot to got, get me a Jose, drink. Yeah, Jose got yeah. his, I think, iced coffee, iced coffee with yep. caramel. Yep. And then you know we were chilling. He's like, okay, we're gonna watch these two movies. We put the Godfather. He's like, oh, I, gotta some, I gotta go get some food. He brings the Doritos. I'm like, ooh, ooh don't, Doritos. Don't mind me, Doritos. So yeah. I should have had like Italian food. I should have had like some prosciutto or some uh, some managat, you, know? Um, yeah, well, you know. Yeah, that's this is this is something I learned when I first came went to Manhattanville. Um, I had a buddy named Pete. He was one of his big, big, tough, real Italian guy, and so they were serving. If you look at it, it says manicotti. It's not manicotti. It's managat. Not manicotti, managat. So I'm there. It's like I'm having lunch with Pete, and like it's like Pete, yo, this, this manicotti is really good. He goes, Fred, what did you just call it? I'm like manicotti? No, 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 Fred, it's not manicotti. It's managat. So you, what? One of the great cultural contributions of sounds uh, like you're saying man, I got. Yeah, like a but man, I got man, I got. But it's that's actually much closer to how it's supposed to be pronounced than manicotti. <laughs> so, 
But again, if you watch The Godfather, you learn how to pronounce certain Italian things. Like, Gabagu! <laughs> Gabagu! <laughs> and, I don't know, that's that's something... I'm talking way too much here, Matt. Talk sprechen! I was Shrek-y. talking, you and I just delivery. interrupted. I just—I was literally going to say, after that, when I got to my parents' house, I ate, they had Doritos, and I thought it was nacho cheese, but it was a spicy Dorito. So I'm eating oh. them. Like, why is my, why is my, why my like tongue feels spicy? And I'm like, like, oh, like why you didn't? I told my mom, why you didn't tell me these were spicy Doritos? So your mouth was on fire. It was on fire, but like I'm just like Matt's mouth was on fire. Okay, go ahead, Alicia Keys. Freddie Keys, I love Alicia Keys. I, I, I have, I have always had like a secret crush on Alicia Keys. Not just because she looks really good, but she's absolutely talented. She has a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. So, back to the Godfather. Back though. to the Godfather. You see how we always just we go always one just way, go, way, go the other way around. around. And we're probably gonna have to do the um, once we've gotten all of the jitters out of our system, we will be back and that that whole bit. But we'll just get it all out now for another couple more minutes. Is there anything else that you would like to discuss that uh, that's mm. of good note? Either um, um, oh, let's let's catch up with you. What is your? Do you have any uh, first impressions about movies you've seen? Um, I haven't seen. I haven't been to some movies since the past two weeks. I didn't. See, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. I didn't see Indiana Jones. I'm probably just gonna watch that when it comes out. Maybe that's um, what I heard. I heard the next hits, one. Yeah. The next one is gonna be uh, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. I but I ain't gonna lie. I don't know why. For some weird reason, you're gonna think I'm crazy. I don't, I don't know why. I want to watch that Barbie movie too. I don't know why. A lot of people have been talking about the Barbie movie, and I don't know why. It's like I I, I just don't know. It's just random. I'm not gonna watch it on theater, so I'll probably just wait till it comes out. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, cool. I, I don't know. Okay, look, I I know it's kind of weird, but it's not it's not anime; it's live action. Okay. Yeah. How much you want to bet that you'll watch that Barbie movie? I will not watch a Barbie oh, movie. Oh, okay. No. Okay, no. you know who's in it? I um, even. <laughs> what's her name? Margaret. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. She's in it. Who the heck is Ken? I can't remember. I gotta look it up. But yeah, here, you keep talking real quick while I look at it. I will not... I I even have a disdain for Aqua's Barbie Girl, which is a song that don't listen to, primarily because it's uh, very bad. And two, it... Ryan Gosling. Oh, Ryan Gosling. I like Ryan Gosling. But I don't I don't think I'm going to Oh, Will Ferrell's in it, too. Ooh, Will Ferrell. What does, who does Will Ferrell play? I, I don't know. I just know for some reason I want to watch it. I don't know why. Because a lot of people have been talking about it randomly. But I'm going to watch Open. How do you say it? Oppen- Oppenheimer. 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 Apparently, there's no CGI in the movie. As you know what? Christopher Nolan said there's no CGI. As right? you should try to make more movies oh. with less CGI in it. Mission Impossible is coming out uh, this week on Wednesday. Have you continued to watch the rest of the Mission uh, Impossible? So I did watch Mission Impossible 2 on Thursday, I think it was, or Friday, I can't remember. So I gotta try to watch the other five. I think it's five yeah. There's more. a lot of them. Yeah, the, or four. It more. gets even. It gets even better. Mission Impossible Two was it was good. Good. But you said nothing. But, but last time you told me like none of the movies were bad. So no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not about, saying that thing, it's one bad. One thing I learned about it's Mission Impossible is every movie it's they its, had its a own couple more minutes, and it's also its own thing. Yeah, but they added a couple more minutes. I'm like. Oh, so this one's two hours. The next one's like two hours and five minutes. The new one is like, I think, two hours and 43 minutes, I think, or something like that. Oh, man, that's, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. It's a, and it's a part one, so. The one thing that I'm actually looking forward to, did you ever see Dune? Like No, the new I have Dune? not. See, the only reason why I have not watched Dune yet is because I want to watch the whole thing. Because Zendaya is cool. Well, they're making a part two. I know. That, Dune two. Yeah, that's why I'm waiting until Dune 2 is released so that once I can just watch all of them. Oh, I see what you mean. The Hunger because, Games, I think they're making a sequel to President. For, have you ever saw Hunger Games? I have. I have. What's the name? President of Snow or something like that? I don't know. I I haven't seen the. I haven't. It's been a while. It's been a minute since I so watched the Hunger Hunger the the Hunger see, Hunger Hunger Games. I'm not the only one who made a mistake today. I no. I I said the hung, I just mispronounced. Hunger. 
Hunger Games, not Nilesis and Nilesis. That <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Analyst. That. So I told I told PB, why don't we just have a short video, a short um, episode? Never, it, it's not it's gonna be short. It never is. Short. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. It's we like, like to talk. We do like to talk. Yeah, I'm and sorry. I'm sorry if we bore you, but that's just how we always just love to talk. I know, but that's just how it is. But we are approaching the 15 minute mark. We so are in the 15. We, we are in the 15 minute mark. So, so we will be right back. We're gonna take a short breaky break. Enjoy these cool beats, which DJ Maddie Matt created. I said, we need something that kind of has, like the Godfather theme, but our own style. No, and no, then, no, no. I said our own style. You said the Godfather. I'm like, what about we do like something that sounds like the Godfather, but our own style? And I said, Matt, we're wheels up in like 14 minutes. Make it happen. And then, pow. You get this, which you're going to hear in a few minutes. And once it's done... And it we'll, probably was in the opener, too. Yes, in the opener. And then when it's done, we will... Rizu. And we are back. We're back. We're going to finally talk about The Godfather. The Godfather. Just want to apologize if we do by accident steer away. Sometimes that happens. That's how we are. Just saying. But we're going to go straight into The Godfather. And what is one thing you want to talk about in The Godfather? Well, I think the thing that we have to first talk about in The Godfather is its uh, influence, I think, on a lot of a lot of things in culture. I really believe that you know, if we didn't have The Godfather... Uh, the the concept of the crime family drama, the mafia genre, would not be as popular at, unless we had The Godfather. But let's just talk about the movie itself. Like what are like the the things that makes The Godfather so epic? Since I I mean I've you've probably seen it. I've seen it a gajillion times, but me, like two I, to three times. Yeah. Because with me, it's something you always study as a film writer, as a as a writer, because it's so well written, and the plot twists and the intricacies are so good. But for you, Matt, since you're a little bit younger than I am, um, though you've got an awesome film mind, as a as a younger film viewer, what did you? What was something that you were able to take away from watching something well, that's so good, like The Godfather? I have like movies that are like I think masterpiece. Mm -hmm. You know, like for example, Avengers Endgame. I think it's a masterpiece. My opinion, Infinity War is a masterpiece. Uh, I think Scarface. Yes, Scarface is a masterpiece. I think Godfather One and Godfather Two are masterpiece. Godfather Three, eh, we don't want to really talk about that one. Um, and what I could say is what I love about like Godfather is like how well written it is and how well the story is. Mm -hmm. You know, because. When you when you're doing like a mafia movie, you want to try to bring the people and make it seem like, oh, I'm part of that family, and that's literally what The Godfather does. It makes you feel like, oh, you're part of the family. You understand the whole story of why they're doing this this way. They're doing it that way, and it just gets you a feel of how, like, if you like, like, it's like when a movie does, like, you know how for me, if I even in a show, if I like a character, I'm so hooked into that character, yeah. like I focus on that <clears throat> character. And I think that's what it does in The Godfather. When you figure out Michael, like you're like, oh wow, he's like a normal citizen like me at first. Normal guy, yeah. Normal guy like me. Then you find out he's getting into the he's getting into it more. You're just like captivated by it. You're like, well, what's making him do that more? You know. Mm -hmm. Then you think about his brother Sam, who's the hothead, and you're like, oh, Sunny, Sunny, Sunny. Wait, I thought his name was Sam too. Okay, Sunny. Sunny. I made a mistake, Sunny. And you're just like, okay, but like they get you into it. Like they make you like those characters. Just like the same thing with um like Avengers Endgame or just in, in Avengers or like superheroes. Mm -hmm. You get used to being with that character. Like for example, I like Batman. Well, why do I like Batman? He's a normal human being, but he deals with problems and you know, they get you. You keep watching movies or you keep watching read the comics or watch the show, you fell in love with the character. Correct. Yeah, I, I agree with, with what you mean there, especially the fact that these characters are written, even though they're in a lifestyle and 
something that we 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 won't necessarily understand. Like I can never be in the mafia. I I think just even just by birth and choice, I can I can never be in it. But there's something always so captivating about that lifestyle and or or the the story and the mystique around it. But we don't watch. I don't think we watch The Godfather for that. For me, at least. The reason why it, it goes in step with what you're saying is looking at how these characters, how these characters relate to each other, how these characters deal with with things, how these characters express their anger, express their faithfulness, express their their loyalty and their respect or disrespect to, to how they deal with conflicts and how they do that. It's like, you know what? Yeah, if I was in that situation, I don't know if I'd react the same way, but there is a very real reaction to how it, it is. Um, Not what, only that, yeah. the movie was made in, I think, 1972. Mm-hmm. And it still ages well. It, 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 it ages it's, like, timeless. it's timeless. It is it a timeless well. classic. You mentioned The Godfather, and I don't think you can find anybody that can say something bad about it. Because everybody says, yeah, it's a good movie. It's probably not their favorite movie, but everybody is willing to acknowledge that it is, in fact, one of the best movies. I mean, out. there's going to be people that will say, no... Okay, not trying to be funny. Me and Fred, we're Christians. But we're not, we're not going to go to the extreme where, like, we're going to be like, yo, you know, you can't watch, like, you know. Me, personally, I'm not trying to be funny. I watch movies a lot. Rated R movies. You do? Yeah, like, I watch Rated R movies, Rated PG-13 movies, Rated PG. Some people don't like Rated R movies. Some Christians don't, you know. And so those are going to be the ones that be like, oh, you shouldn't watch that movie. So it talks about, you know. It's not specifically about drugs, but it mentions drugs and you know yeah. all these other things. There are, yeah, I agree. That one thing we have to put this caveat out there: it is an excellent movie, but it is it has a lot of things there that, if you're not mature enough, that you should definitely stay away from. And two, it can affect your spirit. So you know, just giving that caveat out there. But me, per- and this is just me being honest, I feel like. I could watch a movie, right? And this is me, but honest. I could watch a movie, and it doesn't really like you know. Because some people think like a movie could apply, like oh, they'll try to do that in a movie. I don't try to do that in a movie. Yeah, I just watch the movie to watch it. Because that's you know the whole concept of fantasy reality, which is a uh, which we will revisit because that was our initial oh, what, what uh, old school. It? What was it called? Uh, fantasy versus reality. No, we think. Oh, what was it? Fantasy. Ah, oh, I can't remember. The yeah, name. we had you had a term for it. Ah, gotta, uh, I gotta remember. If you are interested in that, go check out our. Well, you keep talking. Bus I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look at it. But uh, in terms, but what we still really can in, can appreciate is how the story is told, how the characters are written, and also how the how the actors are able to portray these particular characters. So, and there is a human element to it that makes it such a timeless. Classic. So, uh, who who would you say is your favorite? Tragedy and Fr- fantasy. Tragedy and fantasy. No, no, no. and uh, fant. I can't remember how to say. Tragedies and fantasy. Yeah, yeah tragedies and fantasy. Who is my favorite character? Who would, if you were to pick? And I think that this is it's pretty easy. This like a no brainer. Who's who's person everybody likes in The Godfather? But we can we can understand like. I think that majority of people will say that this is their favorite character Who from The Godfather. Favorite? All right, we'll say it at the same time. Like it, like okay, in three, two, one. Michael. Michael. Oh, okay, okay, so yeah, of course we did. I mean, I like Vito too. Don't get me wrong. I like, um, oh, yeah. I like him too. Why are you not going to say that Vito is your best and your favorite? So I, why? I mean, he's know, the Godfather. The thing he's with, the Godfather. The thing, and, uh, the thing with Vito is like they hardly like. I feel like they show him in the beginning, but then like they rage him off a little bit because he's yeah because they, they ha- like they because have they to. have to they and have then to. they go so what I like about here's what I like about the Godfather okay so because I'm gonna give you more in, in detail is it's different ty- different stories okay so let me explain Vito is probably the first half of the movie mm-hmm. like maybe the first couple probably half first fourth, quarter, first third third of third, that yeah. movie then it goes to Sunny Sunny. Then it goes, it goes to like Sonny and Michael actually. Well, yeah, yeah Sonny and Michael. Su- yeah, and then and then it goes after you know I'm not gonna spoil that part, but then it goes to mostly Michael. Yes. But what I like about it is like it show, it goes to all three of them, and like they were different. Mm-hmm. Like for example, 
Vito, he was more of the not the violent, not the revengeful one. He was an old school. But he was old school. If you go too far, he'll figure out a way to make you change your mind. Exactly. Sonny. I'm going to give you an offer that you can't can't refuse. refuse. Sonny, he's more of the hothead. So they'll get him mad and he doesn't think before he does it. Right. Where Michael, he's both. He's both. He's He's, smart with it. He's calculating. He's smart. But he, he also is he, but he, person wants he will eat your face Like he <laughs> could be a hothead And that's what I like about Michael Is because like when You look at the interaction And like the things he did mm-hmm. The way he did everything at the end Was a masterpiece He planned it all out Like everything he planned was perfection Like he did great to the T And it you're like wow Like an expert chess player Yeah it's basically like, like he was They were making playing the chess moves, right? and they were playing checkers that's what it was. Yeah, they were even playing. They thought that they were, they were playing, playing chess, chess, but he's, but he's like, like nah, bro, I, I I've know. already did. This is this is the thing. But here's the great thing about it too: is his father was the one that helped him to to, to understand. To understand. Yeah. So that's when he started playing chess instead of checkers. But um, what is it also when when I say the 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 term tragic hero? That's usually a hero that uh, kind of falls from grace, sort of. Like he is a person of virtue, but then all of a sudden falls and becomes a villain. It's just like that. What it said in Batman: you like you either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. How do you feel about the tragedy or the fall from grace of Michael Corleone? Because for me. That we were discussing this, me, Jose, and Matthew, after the movie, was that I think that's one of the major cruxes of the story. The fact that this was a guy that nobody wanted this life for him. Because he was a war hero. Yeah, he was a war hero, college student, successful person. And then Vito and Sonny both mentioned to that that this isn't what we want for you. This isn't what's wanted. Sonny wasn't. It was more Vito. Yeah. And, but he just gets dragged into this. There's even that part where he goes to, uh, he goes, okay, that's not, that's my family. That's not me. But then all of a sudden he gets brought into the, the light of this one. You know what that shows you? It shows you that when you hang out with it or you are around it a lot and you start hanging around it a lot, you become what it is. But the problem, here's the thing though. I don't think that he, I, with Michael, what makes it, Tragic is the guy has really no choice. He has to act on it. He had a choice. And this is me because, personally. This is me. Per- and because, this is me personally. I honestly believe he did have a choice. He yeah, he was there for his father. That part he didn't have a choice with, right? He's trying to protect his father. I think he had a choice, oh, okay. and he could have let Sonny, even though he was a hot head, deal with deal it. with everything. But here's where everything changed. Okay. Everything changed is when they made that plan and Tom literally said, we should just let it go. Don't try to kill him. Let him be. Mm-hmm. And then that's when Michael said, no, we need to act now. And that's when got him to going into it more. And in fact, just to play off of what you're saying, the other thing with it is that they really didn't, they, they knew that they had to go that route. But what makes it crazy is that Mike volunteers Tears. to do he it. Volunteers, so, so that's the step to the. Choice. So yeah, me personally, like, so that's what's, the um, the uh, the climax, the, the, the climax, climax of, of it. it. Like, it's like this is where this is where things are gonna it is is gonna change. He can either just stay as a normal m- citizen, as Michael, as Mike, the war hero, war hero, college student gets married to Kay, they have a ton of kids outside of the family business, and then Sonny is the one who just rises up as a godfather and then a war just explodes out. But he chooses what? He chooses to do it himself. To do it so himself. I think he had a choice, you know, and I think and this is what gets me it was why you had to watch and realize like his dad was the one that didn't really want. Sonny didn't care on things. No, had, I think no, son, I think I think what it is is that Sonny, Sonny understood understood, why, understood his, why his dad, dad didn't, didn't want, want it. it. But I'm saying like Sonny But then Sonny, Sonny kinda didn't, didn't really, He went along with it. Yeah, he He's went like, along with it. He would have been like, No, 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 no. 
Because remember this. He laughed. He said, oh, well, you were... This isn't the same as, like, shooting somebody from from a long distance. You got to get really close. And he's like, can you do that? And he's like... And his dad, at the time, his dad was even like, no, you're not doing that, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think, me personally, Sonny cared, but Sonny's like... You, yeah. You're your own. You're gonna make your own choice. You're gonna make. You're, you're yeah. the one gonna make this choice, not me. Choice. Yeah. And so that's why I say like, and I think, you know, that one spot where there was that one part where it was him and his father, and his dad. He's like, "What's on your mind?" To his dad, to Vito, he goes, "You know, I, I didn't want this life for you. you know, yeah. I didn't want this for you." He was like, "I oh, I always thought that you was something better." Like you could be a senator calling on or governor. governor calling on it. Instead of the person being the puppeteer, you're the man with who's holding the strings. Yeah, which, he, and he told him like he didn't want he, him that he didn't for want his him life. Had that. He yeah. said he said Sonny Sonny chose that life. Yeah. But Fredo he, Oh Fredo. Okay, we the go. other brother, he chose that life. But he's like, I didn't want you to choose that life. I want one of my kids to be a senator or governor. Yeah, they, they don't want that like they wanted to you not to have that particular kind of life, and he and that's the thing he had it, but he got dragged back into I don't into even the think tragedy. He got dragged it. back into. You know what I think it was? Just me be be honest with you. I feel like he got uh, he. You could tell he got kind of hungry. Hmm. He got kind of hungry because hmm. if you want to be honest with you, if he chose K, right? I'm not like that person, right? Yeah. I get it. He wants revenge for his father, right? But he knows that his dad doesn't do revenge. He knows a little bit about the family business because they probably tell him about it. He, then he's not in it though, right? He mm-hmm. knew a lot about it when he was talking to Kay about it. So my thing is, I think he realized like he wants that. He wanted it. He wanted, he wanted to have that, that power, that life. You know, at the end of the day, you can say, "Oh, well, he was put into it. He was for. He wasn't forced." No he one, makes that choice. No one put a gun to his head. Yeah, exactly. And said, "Hey, hey, you got, gotta, you got to, you got to join the family business." And it's like, like everybody's like, "Mike, you want to choose this? Then this is this is your. Choice. This is what's gonna happen. We have to exile you. You have to go to Italy for who knows how long. I think it was maybe for a year or so, and that's it. I think to there is a, yes, it's true that he doesn't. He does have a choice, but I think that certain things just happen. That make it like, you know, this, I do have a choice. He but considering say, the circumstances, at, at first, I had to make this particular choice. Like, for example, at this, first he was like, okay, at first it was more like he wanted to protect his dad. Remember, he goes to the hospital, no one was there, yeah. you know, except for one nurse, he had to protect his dad. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, that then the policeman, you know, the beat officer, him captain, up. beat him up. Yeah. And I think... He just he just literally wanted revenge. That's like literally what he says. Like I just want revenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's then, the turn. That's the turning point. The turning point is like, I, I want revenge. You know, I want to do something. But then now he wants to get his hands dirty, dirty, and he doesn't. And he doesn't. And he's afraid to get his hands dirty too. At the same time, like he is kind of scared. He, yeah, but he still. But, but he still. Go, but he still makes the choice. choice. He still, he still the makes choice. the choice to to do that. And, so, I, and that's the um, the one of the major aspects of it that. He makes the choice yeah. to to go down this particular route. Um, who are other your favorite characters in the movie? I'll tell you one thing. I never met someone as dense as K. <laughs> I never met someone Mal was as being naive, K. Dense as K. As literally Michael is gone for like a year. Doesn't tell K where he goes because he can't. She's writing to him. They don't write. He doesn't write back to her. He he comes back. He comes back to America. Doesn't contact her for a year. So that's like two years. Two years. Goes to where she's at. And literally this girl just goes back with him. Never been someone more dense than that. Where were you for the past? How long you been back? A year. Why have you come back? Because. Because. But I still love you. And I want to marry you. I want to marry you. I want you to be the mother of my oh, kids. Oh, oh my sure, Michael. Michael. She goes, oh, I can't. He goes, get in. Okay. <laughs> like, I never it's like, been... here, yeah, the, the thing with Decay, it's like, you know what this is. I mean, read the room, honey. This guy is now the godfather. No, it's, it's not even that. It's just like, she's just it, so... That's how it's going to go. That's how it's, it's going to go. That she was. It's just like... <laughs> I like how are you gonna just let this guy come back to your life in two years? Just be like no contact, nothing, nothing. And, like 
you know, I mean, you got a good life in uh, teaching kids, teaching kids in, in in suburbia, and you don't have to deal with this kind of life. And then all of a sudden, Michael comes back, and then, and then, you, then you know, and then you have a kid with them. It, it, it's just, it, it's kind of funny how that worked out. Yeah, because what's funny too is and he doesn't even tell he her. He doesn't about tell her. And you want me to be honest with you? He basically cheated on her. Well, come on, bro. Here's the thing. He never said he, that. He never. He, he they. I don't. I. They never broke up. True. He never said to her, "I'm but breaking up with you." He didn't also expect to have to go back because what? I think that he, he knew he had to go back, but it wasn't going to be for a really long time. Because he even said, like, he was going to bring his girl back with him that he he had date. He yeah. He so I so here's here's a, a what if question. So uh, as you well, so in this is how it happened. So after Michael. Uh, gets revenge on. Oh gosh, what's his name? Can't remember his name. The guy, the brute Tatalia. Wait, he he, he uh, is it Tatalia? No, it was the one with the S. So him and the and the captain. and the captain. So once he kills both of them, spoilers definitely, but you should have watched this movie already. But. When he kills both of them, he's exiled to Italy. Italy. And when he's in Italy, he meets the fine Apollonia. <laughs> she, and she's like this gr- half Greek, half Italian model. She looks beautiful. And they hit it off, and it's good. And she, she, they get married. And then what happens? Yeah, uh, she dies. She gets killed. So my here's my here's my what if. So there are a lot of what ifs here. Like, for example, what? How would the movie play out if Santino never gets killed, and he still stays as the Godfather? That's one one aspect. Second aspect: What happens to Michael if Apollonia doesn't die? What if he does? He stay in Italy forever? Does he become an Italian no. mob boss? That what if was answered. He was going back to America no matter what. He was going to. And he's going to take Apollo- he Apollonia. Want, he wanted to teach her English. She you wants remember? to. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Like, gotta, we got to work on. I want to teach you some English. Like we could go back when we go back to America. Said, I already know Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Saturday. Saturday. She says Sunday instead. <laughs> so but, it's yeah, but but then like. So the the the, the what is it? So you have Sonny still alive. Sonny's the Godfather, and then he comes back. Is K still in the picture? Is K gone? No, she's gone. Why would he? So go? yeah. If, so if, if so if, how if he have his wife? What, why would he go back to K? What movie would that be? If like if that transpired, I'd like to see that script. Mario Puzo's <laughs> but subordinates. Like, let's so, it so I'm just saying, like, like. Technically, they didn't break up. They didn't break up. I like the, the circumstances, though. Let me think about the circumstances. Okay, she knows that. the family. Bu- she she know, knows the family the, business. She knows she's not that business. dense. She's not. Shouldn't be that oh, dense. Really, friend? Because when she's like, "Where's Michael?" He Where's has Michael? A, right in a letter to me. Can I call him? No. No, you can't. They and she thought that they were still dating. But then he comes back. Where were you for the past two years? Read the room, lady. He left you. He was not trying to get back with you. Cut but then, off. But Cut then he realized off. that he can't find someone, so he went back to you. Well, I guess we more mad. She goes, I love you. I'm like, oh. and then she falls for him. Just like, what is she doing? And then, and you know very, very well that what you're getting involved, especially the the real big hammer on the nail really is the a nail in the coffin. I mean, it's really at, it's at the end when she knows when she says, "Did you have uh, Paulie killed?" No. And then she believed him. She believed him. And then when everybody comes and calls him Godfather, the door closes. And she's just like. Uh, uh. Read the room, lady. <laughs> it's just crazy how how oh, dense man. she was. This is crazy because it's like you can't be that dumb and naive to think that oh, this guy. She should be like, this guy left me. <laughs> yeah, I think no, she didn't do that. It's like okay, you know the whole concept of you know you marry into the family. 
Well, here you're marrying into the family. Then if you are not ready for that kind of lifestyle, go find yourself a professor, <laughs> yep. a teacher. Like I said, we said it was going to be a short video, but... No, we're actually still good. We're still good. We're still good. We're still good. I don't know. I feel like we, we're doing... We have 40. Okay. Um, what Do you have a favorite line from The Godfather? Or... Okay. It's so, favorite kinda, line from The Godfather and your favorite scene from The Godfather. It's hard to do the lines because you... It's been... It was since Tuesday and sometimes I, since I watch multiple things, I have multiple... Like... Like... As much as I love the Godfather, multiple things, I have multiple quotes in my mind, so I can't remember all of it. But I think my one of my favorite scenes is when um, Johnny was trying to get that scene. Uh, <laughs> he's trying to get that. What's it called? Johnny's trying to Cartoon. get. Cartoon. He's trying to get a role. The role. And, uh, the role. And he sends Tom. Tom Hagen is. Vito uh, Tom, sends Hagen Tom Hagen, Hagen is. An underrated character in that movie. He sends Tom Hagen to go talk to the producer or the director. And that, mo and the it, movie. that movie be perfect for him. Yeah. And Make him a big star. Them, the, the guy, the producer slash director, tell him straight up, you don't know who you're talking to, you're a bum. He didn't tell him who he's working for. Yeah. So then he tells him to meet up. He finds, why you didn't tell me Vito was your guy, blah, blah, blah. But he still he told still him. He still thinks that he's bigger than him. him. They showed him a, a prized procession horse that cost race horse six cartoons. Six, what is it called? Like six hundred thousand dollars, which is a lot in the nineteen seventies. And he goes, "This is a six hundred thousand dollars horse right here." Okay, he goes to this house. It's nighttime, and he still he's dis disrespected. He said, dis "Nope." He said, "He's not doing it." Tom Hagen leaves. <laughs> He's relaxed. You know, he's sleeping. He wakes up. He sees blood. He sees blood on his hands. He moves the curves, the, uh, the covers, the covers, the blanket, the horse head, all bloody, right there. Yeah. And he goes, ah! "That's my favorite scene." And the reason why the reason why it's my favorite the reason why it's my favorite scene is because you, this is how powerful Vito is. Dude, this he, they're in California. Vito's in New York. The fact that he got people to actually cut the head off in California, yep, is what crazy. And what else is crazy too is Italy. They respect Vito. Sorry, sorry, I'm hitting the the covers. They respect Vito, so that's how crazy it is. How powerful! How powerful he is. But that's like probably one of my favorites. Yeah, scenes. my I have. It's so hard to pinpoint one. Uh, but one of my favorites is just a small moment. But I, it's one of my favorite scenes. Michael comes in, and uh, uh, I think this is just after um, Vito's been like he's he's back in the house, and there's a lot of people there. And then he's talking to Kay, and then Kay's asking him to say her to tell her that he loves her, and then, and then uh, Clemenza <laughs> goes like. Hey, Mikey, why don't you tell her that you love her? I love you so much. If I don't know to see you, I'm going to die. <laughs> and then he tells them how to cook for so many people. Like, uh, you add your meatballs, your sausage, a little bit of sugar. And then you let that all simmer, a little white wine, a little garlic. And I'm like, I don't know why I love that scene. That's one of my favorite. If if, if there's a, a scene, I'm like, hey, here he comes. That it's It's that scene, but... I don't know. It, it's such a, a good movie because there's just so so many quotes you can quote from it. And again, when you watch The Godfather and you watch something like The Sopranos or you watch uh, uh, other mob movies, you kind of can see. Sometimes they'll even use the same actor or actress and they're playing practically the same part in the new one. Uh, but... I don't know, just the sweeping story about it. It's a story about, I guess that's also the reason why uh, we like Scarface. Because it's that American dream. Because you're you're going to, you're like from nothing. And you're making yourself something. And, and we didn't get a chance to watch The Godfather 2. Because The Godfather 2, you really need, it's, I think it's better. I, I think it's better than Godfather 1. Which, I, I know it's up for debate, but... 
there's just so much intricacies with this one and I can't even discuss it because you've never seen it. I saw Godfather. Oh, you saw Godfather 2? I okay. saw all of them. I thought Godfather 2 was the worst of all of them. Which was better, do you think? Godfather 1 or Godfather 2? Oh, I love Godfather 2. Godfather 2, okay. But I'm going to break your heart and tell you I love Scarface both better than both of them. And Scarface is a masterpiece. You series. broke my heart. Hey, hey, don't get me wrong. You not Scar- not Scarface. I love Scarface. Scarface is just... It has the greatest life. It. Say hello to my little friend. You talking to me? No, oh, talking to me is from... You he, talk. You no, talking saying, to me... I is, swear he says that Scarface. He does, but it's more known for Taxi Driver. But I know that, but I'm it's saying he says It's more known for Taxi Driver. He says driver. that Scarface, but he goes, you talking to me? Everybody says you're talking no, to me. No, he says it in a funny... And then he talks about... I think he talks... There's one scene where he does I, talk about... I, I, I kill those cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, there, I think there's another one where he's talking about like them being racist or something. Yeah, I'm part of an anti-Castro group. Look, uh, my favorite, my favorite scene there is like where he, he's trying to convince his mom that he's a good. He's like, oh, yeah. look, mama, I, how how good a good boy I have been. And he goes on. He's like, no more letters from from prison, Antonio. No, mama. I'm part of an anti Castro group. How that's the that's the, that's the other thing you know that's amazing about Al Pacino. Yeah, Al Pacino did really well. Like oh, he did man. good in Godfather and he did good in Scarface. Yes, but Scarface. like I said, I love Scarface. Say hello to my little friend. Say hello to my little friend. And then like that's another debate. That's another not debate, another talk later about Scarface. Scarface, I'm gonna say this. I think it's more crazier also oh, than gosh. The Godfather. It is the drugs alone. It's is crazy, crazy. But I don't I know. Mean, I just Al Al how is Al Pacino right? Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Al Pacino, is Al Pacino, Michael, Al Pacino did literally well in Scarface. Like I'm just like Al Pacino is just. I good. was, but I was Generally. like when I mean like when I saw it the first time, I was amazed of his acting skills. Because I think I saw, if I'm not mistaken, because he's not even I saw Cuban. The God, I saw the Godfather first. And I said, you know, I never saw Scarface. And I'm just like, oh, hold up. He just, like, killed that. Oh, it's raining. That's what you hear right now. Rain. Rain. But, yeah, we'll have that talk one day, maybe about Scarface. Maybe. We'll see. So, um, let's give a rating for the guy. Because this is something we've never, we never do. A rating? We never give a rating. We need to have... The PB and Cashew well, rating scale. If I said that it was a masterpiece, it's 10 out of 10. I would also say it's a 10 out of 10 as well. So these are the movies. Before we go, I'm going to give you my movies that I think are a 10 out of 10 in my eyes. Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War, Godfather 1, Godfather 2, Scarface, and people might think I'm crazy, but I think Civil War. Captain America Civil War. Oh, youth. Youth. Oh, and also I forgot to say, Singing in the Rain is another one that I love. And Gone with the Wind. Those are my 10 out of 10 so far. So uh, There's probably more. So movies like Lawrence of Arabia, movies like um, Casablanca, uh, The Ten Commandments, not on Matthew's list. Well, I, I, it's been a minute since I saw this. I don't, have I ever saw The Ten Commandments? I might have. Oh, that's long. <laughs> You, we, if we were to discuss the Ten Commandments in its fullest, um, the Nostalgia Critic did a comparison of the Ten Commandments and the Prince of Egypt, which is also a good oh, movie. Prince of Egypt, Prince of Egypt is really good. But if you, oh, but if you've never seen, if you that that could be another. Why? But that that's long, man. You, you know what we you got, need to actually have food. You know what conversation we need to have? We need to have a conversation of underrated Disney movies. Underrated Disney. Underrated movies. Disney. Movies. Big Hero Six. No, you want to know what's one of the underrated Disney movies? Hunchback of Notre Dame. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is never talked about. It's so underrated. Sorry that we. Sorry that we got out of topic. I'm just saying. And we're talking about movies. We're, we're right gonna now. do. You know what? Preview of next week. Maybe. Or, or maybe because we have plans. You know, here's actually. Here's what we're gonna do next week. Let's just say it. Next week. Next week. We're going to play some volleyball. Play Hopefully it doesn't rain. We'll do a PB and cash on the street. Maybe. We don't know because we need the stuff. We don't need the stuff. We got we got our phones. We got this. PB cash on the street. You're going to see PB trying to go for the ball, falling. You're going to see me trying to just 
spike it, even though I can't spike, you know? Bump. You might, we might ask, maybe maybe we might ask other people if they would like to talk, maybe not. Maybe we'll just... I have to have them sign waivers. Maybe we'll just do a, like, a, like a little, not that long, it won't be a long episode. It might, I don't know. No, I probably won't. The reason why it won't be because we might use one of your phone and my phone. You know, we had to. When you're trying to do a video on a phone and you're yeah, trying you're to send it to, <laughs> to your email, you're like, oh, no, you gotta put a clip and clip and clip. It's, it's annoying. It is annoying. But well, we will have it. I'm telling you right now, we will have an episode for next week. Yes. I promise. Since I promise, we gotta keep that promise. I. <laughs> oh man! Oh well, I I thought that this was I almost I, I'll be honest. Yeah, we didn't want to do an episode today, but no, you no. know what? Time will tell us. Yeah, I did not. TV I did not want to do an episode. episode. But then I was like, you know what? We're talking about The Godfather, greatest one of the greatest, probably the greatest movie ever. And so, yeah, we had to do it. So, and on that note, as we say every single week, we don't know you. But we love you, and there's a God above that does. I'm Playboy, and I'm Cashew. Peace, Peace out, Playboy Cashewville. Cashewville.